Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and in this video, we're going to dive into Dialos from Onyx, which is in the brand new software release, and I'm going to show you the very basics of how to use it. Now, um, Dialos is fairly in-depth, and there's only so far we're going to get in this video, which I'm going to cap out at about 20 minutes probably at the maximum, um, and there's a lot more we could get into. So do know that inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs already, We've got over 30 minutes of stuff on Dialos and going to be adding more and more and more for those folks who are in there. So if you're looking for more info, definitely check that out. That's definitely like the sponsor for this video. But I just want to go ahead and show you the basics, show you how to get started and how to start working with it so you can get started today. The very first thing you want to do is if you have it, download the latest version of Onyx. As I mentioned before on the downloads page, you'll want to be in version 4.4 or newer. And then also on that same download page, there's a link for the Dylos factory content. Go ahead and grab that too. That's about nine gigabytes. It's not small. Install that version, get that content ready. And the first thing we're going to do is go here and import that content. So if you're on a console or a PC that hasn't had Dylos on it before, you want to go to the view like this library and see all this awesome free stuff that Elation and uh, Obsidian Controls gave us, but you don't have anything? Well, that's because we need to bring in the content. That's kind of step one. So let's go ahead to the Onyx menu, then to the main menu. Go to load save, and at the bottom here, we will go over to workspaces, nope settings, import Dialos content, select that content package wherever it is on your computer, press open and you will see a dialog open. It'll open and they've gotten this process down so that it actually is pretty quick on most computers or consoles. Now, if you're also saying, David, hey, I don't see these views here. I don't see this view called Dialos. I don't see this view called library. You know, I don't see the 2D plan zone composer combo. Well, that's because you may have loaded an older show file that didn't have Dialos in it. If you did that and you want to just reset the views to start over from scratch, you can go ahead to Onyx again in the main menu, go over to load save, same place, but over workspaces, go to factory workspaces and layouts, press defaults, press OK, and you'll be good to go. Perfect. Now, let's talk about Dialos. Added with Dialos here, we have three new views like I talked about, this one being called Dialos, and it's a combination of the zone composer the zone parameters and the 2D plan view. And if I zoom out a little bit, we can actually kind of see what's going on. Then we have the library and the 2D plan slash zone composer where we can really just see one zone composer on most screens. Okay. And so all of these have some of the same parts to them and, and some parts are different. The first place to be aware of is the library. This is where you're going to see all of that content that came from the factory, but also content you can bring in as an owner or as a user. As I mentioned before, I go through how to do all of this in Learn Stage Lighting Labs, and it's also in the Onyx manual that I was fortunate enough to get to help the team out with. Okay. Um, and so bringing content into there, we're not going to go over right now because we simply don't have time in a short YouTube video. Over here to Dylos, I'll go ahead and I just want to select this first view. Let's actually, we'll go to the second one, the second zone, because that's the one that's up here called stage. When we select a zone in the zone composer, there's a few things we can notice. One, upon selecting, we get down here, the zone parameters, what looks like the library tab. The difference between this and the actual library tab is that when we click on things, stuff happens. Okay. And there's a lot that happens in here and we'll get into that in a moment. Looking up here into the zone composer, we've got our actual zone. Now, each zone has a few different parts. As we see here, if we pop up the Obsidian logo, we get the, the main zone fixture right here and with an intensity control. We get the source. We get effect one, effect two, mapping, and reserved. As you can probably guess, reserve doesn't do anything right now and mapping doesn't really do anything either. But the main zone, the source, effect one, and effect two, all are usable and all are workable in our shows. Let's take a look at an example. Say for a moment, I go ahead and go down here to color and grab one of these videos. I've never used this one before, so it looks like fun. Woohoo, crazy rainbows. 
we see a couple things going on. The first is that we've got color coming across all our fixtures, but we are going to need to give them intensity in order to see that output. Perfect. Once we've got that, actually, I'll go ahead and play something from the main show just so that you can see on the visualizer, which will pop up now, as well as in the 2D plan that we've actually got things that are, you know, pointing somewhere and, and doing something. Awesome. Now that we've got a source defined, there's a few things that we can do with it. We can go in here and we can set the way that it plays back and all of these controls are available graphically as well as from the parameters. And we can also change that source on the fly as needed. Something like this actually looks really cool. Then we can go ahead, we can change the speed right here. And in the parameters, there are even more controls that we're able to work with. Let's go ahead now and click over to mask. In mask here at the top, we have a number of options. We can do a mask over the whole zone, over effect one, effect two, um, or do it with text over one and two. I'm gonna choose a media mask and uh, let's put it over effect one. Boom. If we choose the Onyx logo here, we now see that this effect, this mask, is placed over top of that initial source. Say we go over here to effect two. I clicked on it here in the zone composer. It selected it right here. Maybe we go over here to effect and this time we use one of our friends, the tile effects and we apply that. Now here at the bottom we notice nothing happened. We can set the number of horizontal and vertical tiles. But it doesn't end there. No it doesn't. There's so much more we can do. While we see something kind of cool that doesn't really render well on this low resolution of a display, we can go into the parameters and do even more if we want. So just as an example, say we went ahead into the pan for this effect. You can see here if I start to move it, it's going to spin that across the lights. What if we applied an effect to that? Well, if we did that, then we could totally go ahead and set that speed and watch that media, that content over the lights in a really interesting dynamic way. Noting that we're not even playing a video file for most of the animation. Most of that is just coming from this playback just coming from this effect. So we can see here that it's really powerful in what we're able to do. Once we found something we like, we can record it and it works like anything else inside of Onyx. That's the really cool thing. Just to take a step back, we could record it as a cue, but we can also record it as a preset. Okay. And that's where it gets powerful because we see here that all of the parameters that we worked with in Dylos whether it be choosing the media or the effect, all of that stuff, all of those parameters are right here within the regular parameter groups that we're already used to working with inside of Onyx. Meaning that we're able to quickly go ahead, select what we need, program these things. If you had them into presets, you could really quickly build things on the fly. Not only that, but as you're working, you're going to want to clear from time to time. Clearing is as simple as pressing, pressing this brush here, and then we're able to clear everything or any individual part of our zone. Wow, okay, this media looks really cool, and I think it's gonna look great in my show. Now, what else can we do in Dialos? That was the quick view where we just simply went ahead, recorded some things, and went on the fly, but what if we say program as if it's a real show? Maybe we're running things on the fly. So now we take this basic effect that we've built and we can modify it sure here at the bottom, changing the way that it looks and then maybe apply some interesting effects to it. Let's add this three color gradient. Now we can go ahead, go and add our colors. Make something really ugly and then add some animation maybe with the pan and tilt. We'll go ahead, create that effect again, but this time just on the tilt. And now that we've got something that we like, we can go ahead 
and fade that in. You can see on the lights on our stage that we've actually created an effect and we're able to fade this in and out using this intensity control here in Dialos where as I fade it out, it gives control back to the regular cue that was controlling the lights, but as I fade it in, it then takes control in a cross-fading fashion. Really cool stuff. There are a lot of things that you can do with Dialos, and obviously this is really just a starter. You can see actually in the demo file, if you start playing some things back here, that there's some really interesting stuff that you can play back really quickly. And if you look at this, there it's actually really easy to go ahead, come back in, look at these cues, maybe in the cue list values, and you can start to dissect what they're doing in these examples. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to subscribe. Check out the other resources I've got about Onyx, including my full tutorial on how to begin with Onyx. It'll get refreshed soon, but either way, it will still remain in this playlist, and so you can totally check it out there. Until then, thank you guys for watching, liking, and subscribing here on YouTube, and I will see you guys in our next video. Thanks.